He's temperamental, he's complicated, he can be difficult. But Nigel Benn remains for many the most exciting figure in British boxing. Tonight is his ninth world title fight. The challenger, Henry Wharton, he's got an unbeaten record, he's never been knocked down. Wharton is the official number one contender. They've paid £250 for ringside seats here at Earl's Court. The fights pack them in. It's the main attraction of an awesome lineup. It also features two other big name title fights. Michael Nunn defends his WBA version of the world super middleweight title against fellow American Steve Little. Next, it could be Ben or Eubank. And the old warrior Lloyd Hunnigan, in the twilight of his career, but still a champion, he puts his Commonwealth title on the line. Hello, a very good evening to you all. There's a fantastic lineup of boxing talent here at Earl's Court tonight. It's cost something like three million pounds to assemble. Barry McGuigan is with me upstairs to enjoy it all. Barry will talk in just a moment. But topping our bill tonight, the master blasters, Henry Wharton and Nigel Benn. Like, you know, watching him, even my type of fight, he likes to come forward. And I've just heard Mickey Duff put 10 grand on him. Well, why don't Mickey Duff come and meet me and I'll bet him 20 grand he don't knock me out. He's hungry and raring to go, you know? I just got to put out his fire, you know? Because I know he's going to come at me blazing, hey, but sometimes I think to myself, oh, yeah, I'll just calm him down a bit. But the only way to calm me down is give him a stiff right hand right in the face and make him think, like, well, you know, if you come in here, you know what you're going to get. I know he's got, he's got brilliant left hook, but so have I. So have I, and a right. Nigel Benn's two epics against Chris Eubank produced a defeat and a draw. A massive viewing figures that underline the Dark Destroyer's box office appeal. For this fight, Benn's had a long training stint in the warmth of Tenerife. He's done his work, but relaxed as well, with some eyes being raised at the presence of his children. Nigel Benn's been talking about retirement, but he doesn't expect to do it tonight. I ain't got to look for him. And he ain't got to look for me. That's what I want. If he's got a big punch and all that, I know he's got a big punch. Wait till he fills mine. The challengers based his preparations out in Malaga. Henry Wharton has been number one contender for 15 months now, and he's ready. I don't think I could have prepared any harder. You know, and I've been 12 rounds before. I've been through some real tough workouts, and I've come through them. And I've never worked as hard as this. You know, I've worked very, very hard in the gym, doing some, some, some real tough sparring, and I've come through it, and I'm just looking forward to the fight now. He will be champion. I don't have the slightest doubt in my own mind. I'm very, very confident. He doesn't need any good luck to win. He only he, What he needs is to have no bad luck. Wharton's way behind Ben on experience, just under half as many fights. But he's gone 19 unbeaten. His left hook is a fearsome weapon. This is the toughest fight of my life, by, by a long way. You know, and I know I'm going to have to really go through a lot of pain and, and suck it up, which I have done before. I know that I'm, I'm going to have to take a bigger punches than I've ever took before. But the thing is, I've prepared for taking them big punches. You know, the question is, has Nigel Ben prepared to take them back off me? OK, then, so terrific confidence there in both camps. Barry, who are you siding for? Well, it's a difficult, uh, difficult one to pick. You know, you've got Ben's experience, and uh, he's fighting more like a veteran now, Jim. He's using his head more, he's boxing with more finesse, and using his boxing ability, he's more mobile as well. But then you've got Wharton, who's an all-out aggressive fighter. Only fights the one way, straight at you, non-stop. They both can really bang. 
and I'm my favour. I'm going to favour the experience, and I think it's going to be uh, Ben and a late either decision or stoppage. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you on, on going for Nigel Ben, but the big question here, and what all Wharton's fans down below us are wondering, what's going to happen if Ben gets hit on the chin by that left yeah. hook? What's going to happen if he gets hit by the left hook after the sixth round? Um, don't blink, folks. This is going to be over very quickly, I think. <laughs> or it could be over very quickly, but I, I have a feeling that uh, I'm going to go with Ben. I've got to go with the experience. But uh, the form book's been wrong before. The form book says Ben, but I'm definitely going to go with him. Wharton's such a tremendous puncher, you can never write him off. He's got a fabulous chance, but uh, don't go making any cups of tea because this could be over in a hurry. What about uh, Nigel Ben, though? I mean, a few people are a bit surprised he had his kids over in Tenerife. He's talking about retirement. Is that really the right mood to be going into this fight in? Well, I, I, you know, we, I've written him off before against Eubank. He goes into the ring with the, you know, with the wrong attitude. I thought he's seen better days, but he's proved me wrong before. He's a very relaxed guy. He's more relaxed now than ever before. He's a better fighter, I believe. He's fighting with more finesse. He's boxing better. He's putting his punches together better. He's structuring his, his, uh, his uh, tactics better. Um, Wharton, very strong, very dangerous puncher. Anything can happen. I'm going to go with Ben. OK. The sound behind us. I mean, they're all building up. They can't Fantastic. wait for, for the fight. Can I, I can't wait. But, I mean, Henry Wharton hasn't exactly mixed in the same sort of company no, as he is Nigel Ben. I don't think he's, he's boxed the same colour of opponent. That's what I'm bearing in mind when I'm making this conclusion. He's boxed guys that, that the only familiar opponent is Lou Gent, and Lou Gent lasted four ferocious rounds with Ben, whereas he drew with um, Wharton. So, you know, the form book's got to say, Ben, you've got to go with the experience. But, as I say, this guy's got such a terrific punch, anything can happen. But, I, again, I'll reiterate, I'm going to go with Ben. Thanks, Barry. Almost feel your excitement sitting right, right next to you. Let's pop down to ringside and see the feelings there. Gary Newborn has with him Don King and Frank Warren. Gary. Yes, they're the new little and large partnership in boxing, and they're going to bring us some tremendous fights, big-name world championship fights on ITV. We've got Don King, of course, the man with a great hairstyle, and his new partner, Frank Warren, who recently Don described as faster than a moving bullet. Don, what <laughs> night are we in for tonight? In for a terrific night tonight. You've just seen a competitive match there with another upset, and it demonstrates that we put the best against the best, and this is what the people want, the customers, the recipient of a great night of boxing. And so we have in store for you a fight that's going to be a barn burner with Nigel Ben and Sweetbread Henry Wharton. Frank, I know out of you I'll get a prediction. Who's going to win this big battle? I fancy Nigel Ben. I fancy him very strongly in a very tough fight. But I think he's got the experience and the firepower to stop Henry Wharton. OK, well, let's bring in John McCruick, who knows what the betting is tonight. John. Well, are we in for a major upset? Now, the Dark Destroyer, a classic warrior. Five to two on, they bet him. But nine to four against Henry Ward, and the money has been going on him. Smaller bets at nine to four, 28 to one the draw. But here, we haven't got Don King. We've got King Don, yes. a man with all his subjects here, King Don. But let me tell you this, a harder man to get money out of than you, and he's hard enough, is Mickey Duff, the manager of Wharton. Yeah. He's back Wharton, aren't you worried? King Don? Well, I don't know who's the crazier of the two, Jim. Yeah, who knows uh, that one, Gary. Uh, Mickey Duff apparently has put a very sizable bet on his man, Wharton. A lot of his uh, punters have backed Wharton as well to create an upset here. This one could be an absolute classic. We'll be right back. Hello again from Earl's Court. Uh, Henry Wharton and Nigel Benn are just about to come into the ring. But uh, a few moments ago, a wonderful round of applause for Michael Watson. It's so good to see Michael Watson out and about again. There he is in the, in the tracksuit. Great to see him at ringside and to show the boxing has a, a caring heart. Michael Watson got a fantastic ovation here. It's wonderful to see him at ringside once again. OK, so the two fighters all set to go. Let's join uh, the fellow who's uh, just about the best ring announcer in the world, I would think, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to welcome to the ring the WBC number one ranked super middleweight contender, Henry Wharton.
fella. I asked him earlier this week when the fight face comes on, he says it never does. And he is backed here by thousands. I reckon there's a hundred relations of Wharton in that crowd. Five thousand of them have come south and as John McCurrick has been saying, they've been backing their hunch, this fella will be the new world champion with hard cash. Never ever been knocked over as a professional. He knows he's going to experience all sorts of pain tonight. This will be my hardest fight, but I'll come through it. The words of the unbeaten challenger, Henry Wharton. Terrific support for Wharton. He is the Commonwealth champion, of course. Later tonight, he hopes to be the world champion. A fantastic left hooker and a man with an iron chin as well. And a bit subdued, Nigel Benn. I've seen him knock him over in Windsor, in Aberavon, in Wisbeach. And then he's graduated to the venues like Atlantic City, Las Vegas, Rome and Old Trafford. He knows he's coming to the end. But his ambition is to go out with what he calls a good old-fashioned tear-up. The reigning world champion, Nigel Benn.
Mr. Dodds, we ask you to rise for the playing of the national anthem. It's a very big fight live, it's a huge sporting occasion and to guide you through it, the top team, Jim Watts and first of all, Reg Guthridge. And most important, protect yourself at times, shake hands and come out box. So the final words then, all the fighting words are over, the trimmings are finished, 
and now let's go to, down to action. It's going to be the loneliest place in the world now for these boys. The usual, well, almost emotive words here, and everybody's so pleased to see Michael Watson. This is uh, where he fought Chris Eubank. Second and the down. first time when Jim and I thought he deserved the decision. So there you go. Now then, as Barry McGugan says, don't look away, don't blink, because it could all happen with one hit. Who knows? A lot of maturity now in Nigel Ben's fighting. He doesn't do what he used to call the, the tear-ups, really, in the early stages against, again, his description, the Mexican road sweepers. As you recall, a draw last time up with Chris Eubank at Old Trafford in October. And, uh, well, a lot of us feel that but for that low punch, when he did up to the lost a point, that he might have won that fight. However, very subjective to scoring the boxing. But, uh, but by and large, I hope a little bit better than the, the recent ice skating. What a nice and tight already, Legend. Who can blame him? A good positive start from Ben with a jab. Not getting too close, but just trying to open him up with the jab. What just thinking really defence, get the first round by. He must be feeling the nerves, I would imagine, more than Ben. Ben's been at this level so often. Yeah, he's a very laid-back character on his way, Henry Wharton. Uh, I can understand why he's got a massive support in the north. I haven't seen too much of him in London. We could do with seeing uh, a lot more. And it contrasts with people and only really the eyes are the same and well they're ice cubes. Midway through the opening round. Tony Perez handled one of the great Ali Frazier fights in New York. Just covering himself up sensibly there, Wharton, trying to block those hooks with a high guard. Followers oh. of the fight game, Jim, they might, he looks just like Mark Rowe, who held the middleweight championship of Britain some years ago now. See, Ben is known for looking for a knockout in the first minute of a lot of his fights, and I think that's what Wharton's been told. Nice and tight, especially in the first minute, and maybe loosen up a little bit, get some punches off. That's what he's done. He's done nothing really for the first minute, just had a good look at Ben. Now he's maybe trying to, to look for some targets. Spent a lot of time getting in shape for this. There's a lot of money at stake. Wharton went to Florida and unfortunately his trainer was mugged in the gymnasium, so he came out, they went to Marbella, and meanwhile Ben was tuning up in Tenerife. self-managed officially uh, Nigel Bain and of course very experienced Jimmy Tibb saw him in a lot of other fights and indeed pros there you are keep your hands up he's saying protect yourself from the hooks and there's the think tank as it were in the challenger's corner Mickey Duff's leaning through the ropes there who was uh, the manager, and there's Terry O'Neill, the little, the little man in the ring, being with Wharton from the start, and the cut man, if needed, Danny Mancini. Second out, Certain kind of self-assurance again with Ben. He's, he's always been a confident fighter, but he's he's just become a bit more compact, and uh, Jimmy Tibbs has done a good job on him, uh, hasn't he, Jim, really? Yeah, Getting... he's a lot more controlled now. I mean, Nigel just used to... Look for a knockout punch, every punch he, he throws. But now he's so controlled, he thinks more about pacing. I mean, Nigel was always looking for the finisher, and so it would go tired in the, in the last day, half of a fight. But I was impressed against Eubank, that he really paced the fight well, and he's doing that here. Just used the jab in the first round there, which I thought he nicked. And now Watton's coming back, Watton's of his look. 
Now, Wharton knows now he's got to start unleashing a punch or two now, reminding uh, Ben that this is not going to be an easy one. And the left hook is favourable punch. And the people forget that Ben can box a bit. He was the ABA champion. going for the body a bit as well, trying to bring those hands down. One of the old axioms of the, of the fight business is the work to the body and the head, head must fall. And Ben's quite prepared to be the first one to lead off Reg. He's actually putting Wharton on the defensive here. A good positive start from Nigel Ben. So midway through the second, scheduled of course for 12, championship fight, WBC version. 12 stone exactly, Ben. 11, 13 and a half, Wharton. Okay, break! Break, don't go to you! Wharton's just a little bit tight at the moment, Reg. He's going to have to settle down a little bit, relax a little bit more. He has to keep his defences sound. Just uh, loosen up a little bit. Well, you know, Jim, you can't blame him in his first World Championship fight, being a little bit hesitant at the start. He got him winging punches, he might have got nailed. Oh, tried a chop punch there, they've landed on the back of the neck, that would not have been welcomed. There, a bit of a post and he's not punched that one. So, end of the second. Throw the gun. We're back then for round three. And it's been very cautious and very sensible start, actually, by both of them, I thought. Ben's been cautious, Reg, but he's quite keen to lead off. His jab's been working well in the first couple of rounds. Yeah, doing a bit of boxing. Uh, he's keeping his chin down nice and tight. He's paying Wharton full respect. He's quite prepared to let some punches go. Wharton must loosen up a little bit. Definitely working to the body as, as much as he can there, Ben. It's always been his forte anyway. A little bit of caution there, Jim. They're both right in the lead there. Try, one trying to faint the other one into a lead so they can counter. And you can actually feel the tension in the ring, Reg. I mean, one mistake and the other fellow's going to be on the floor. They both have the power. But Ben getting the punches off better at the moment. It's inevitable with punches, though, Jim, aren't they? They're, they're, you know, they're both saying, hey, this is red alert here, we've got to watch ourselves. We, we foolish of them to rush in and take chances because they can both bang. Well, what? They're going to let some go now. I've given Ben the first couple of rounds and he won them without really wasting too much punches there, so as far as the 12-round distance goes, that's a good start for Ben. Yeah, he doubled that jab up again there, good point scoring stuff this. We've got American, Welsh and English judges.
Wharton's going to have to try to start coming forward a bit more, Regs. He's been backed up all the way. And Ben loves if he can back opponents up. He's got to try to come forward. They look a little bit better at the back of the hall than they do close up as we are, Jim, there. They've punched the wall and they're hitting him on the arm. He's out the ropes there. He's got to let him... He's trying to fight from outside the rope. Well done. He just caught him on the arms a bit too much there, didn't he, Walton, when he unloaded? Yeah, but he let the punches go. Yeah, let him go, yeah, go. sure. He must. He's just a little bit too tense at the moment, Walton. And it's the fourth round. Good start by Nigel Ben. A little bit cautious, and there's the unofficial card of Baron McGuigan. Yes, three rounds up, he's made him. Just a little, little rebuke there from Tony Perez. Just behave yourself there, pulling on and throwing punches like that. I think probably controlled is a better way of uh, describing Ben's first three rounds rather than cautious because he's always ready to let the punches go. He's worked well behind a jab. Watton, for me, is far too tight, too tense. And he's not going to outbox uh, Ben at this rate. And he can't just depend on a knockout. He's got to do more work. He's got to open up a little bit. He seems sort of laying back there, Walton saving himself or something. I don't think that's going to be in his favour. The last time he did that, he got a draw with the London new gent, which was highly disputed, and uh, Ben really destroyed the uh, new gent in London. Jab, is he? His jab's working so well, Reg. I mean, it's, it's unusual for Ben to face a man he doesn't have to go looking for. Some good shots from Wharton there. But he has to sustain this. There's a sort of look on Ben's face like, hello, hello. The lads are unloading some punches and I'll take those and there's no trouble. Talking about searching for openings there, Jim. They really are, aren't they? C certainly Ben is. Ben's job is working so well in the first three rounds. See, it's not the, to quote Ben's words, the tear-up and the blast type of fight that people expected, but it could be working up to that, though, couldn't it, Jeff? See, Ben doesn't have to do that, Reg. He's winning the rounds without wasting any punches. He's so controlled, Watt's not doing enough work in any of the rounds. You know, the only time Watt's letting punches go is when Ben's already up close, and by that time, Ben has landed a couple of jabs on the way in. See much of the Walton fang left hook, really. It's because he's allowing Ben to lead off all the time. Walton must do more leading off if he wants to get into this fight. Well, it looks like a barber shop there at the moment, doesn't it? Uh, Paul Quarton. Calm and collected. Let's have a look at this double jab coming up, Jim. Ben's jab is working so well, very accurate, very controlled. His chin's down, bang, bang, two perfect left jabs. This, this is um, Sackney. He, he comes in there, Ben. You've got a, a little counter attack coming in by Wharton. Not enough from Wharton, Reg. A couple of punches inside, but not enough. Ben's work is always looking better. Rub down there by Mr. Mancini and a few uh, harsh words in the air. There it is. You go and do it or else. Five. That's the corner man's job there, especially with experience. Bit of a think tank there in Morton's corner. And it's it's also being matched by Jimmy Tibbs in the other corner. 
lovely finish from Ben. Yeah, right through the middle there, right above us. I don't know if this is part of Wharton's tactics, Reg, or if he's frozen a little bit. He's certainly not really got down to work yet. Oh, well, a little bit of an armistice there, sorry about that. He walked and wanted to race right in after him. Now, this, uh, to coin your phrase a lot now, Jim, Ben sort of fancies the job a bit more now, doesn't he? He wants to start steaming in a bit. You know, he doesn't really want to change what he's doing. If he can win rounds in a 12-rounder without wasting any punches, without exerting yourself overly, then that's what you want to keep doing. Nick every round you can, then when the reach is the hard part, you've still got something left. But Wharton is the one who really has to get down to work. He's been doing nothing. Okay, right. Throwing some punches up close, but he has to do more leading off. Has to get, get his own jab working. It is a big, big step in experience and ability here, isn't it, uh, by Wharton? A lot of signs, Reg, that Wharton has frozen a little bit. I mean, he hasn't been prepared to, to take the fight with the scruff of the neck and take it to Ben, and that's what you must do. When you're with a big puncher, you must try to back him up. Wharton has never that's once tried to back Ben up. He's allowed Ben to control the action, and he's winning all the rounds. Yeah, and he's hanging on there, too, like a limpet for the right-hand uh, arm, I should say, Wharton. Even when Wharton throws a punch, you can see he's still thinking about defence. As soon as the punch is out, he's pulling his elbows in and his chin down. He's just paying too much respect to Ben at the moment. Minute to go in the fifth round. WBC version of the Super Middleweight Championship. So Wharton's actually dying to have a chance of Henry Henry coming from the audience. There's quite a, they've really come down in the coach loads and bus loads and or probably caravans too because he comes from a travelling family. Born in Leeds and raised in York. See, what hasn't really let any full-blooded shots go because he's almost on the defensive. He's almost reacting to what Ben's just done. So he's not really setting himself and getting the full power into his shots. He really has to think about leading off if he wants to get into this fight. there at the end of the fifth round and the referee just signaled out here yes he considered that a knockdown although Ben uh, complained about a punch on the back of the head it was apparently he thought a left hook just before that and he's called it a knockdown now but that's what Wharton needed Reg he needed something to get his heart into this fight now we'll see if he pours heart and soul into what's going to happen now he really has to waken up his ideas See, the, w, the WBC always say to the judges, you've got to take a point off a man scores a knockdown. I don't necessarily agree with that. Well, a different man altogether has come out to start this round, Reg, from Henry Wharton's corner. Now he fancies the job. First signs of a good uppercut there from them, wasn't it? And there, the left hook took. He takes a punch well. There has done in the past, walk in many ways, but it still gym to match the heart, I think. Now we're getting some uh, reaction from the Wharton supporters, having seen that, well, maybe it was disputed knockdown as far as the judges are concerned, they've got to go by the referee's instruction. Yeah, the right hand there, not the left hook that he's talked about. Yeah, but he's coming back with full-bodied counters now, he's not just kind of chapping inside as he was earlier, now he's getting power into his punches, now Ben has to think a bit more about defence.
Well, they're laying in a little bit now. They're getting stiffer for round by round, these punches, aren't they? Oh, they got a rule with that, but it actually went past. Ben's kind of lost his composure a little bit, Reg. He's building forward now. He's not putting the same thought into his boxing. He's just putting his forehead down and kind of pushing himself forward. It's not the thoughtful boxing we saw in the first four rounds. Sometimes you can hear the bell watching at home and it uh, can't be heard in the arena, although that, that bell was very clear to everybody, I think. So now this is what we want to see, the knockdown from the round before, Jim. Ah, the left hook, it was, you see, that he was stumbling a bit there and then he got caught. That's it, now the next punch, that one, hits him on the back of the neck, but then he still regarded as a knockdown, the referee, you agree? Yeah, this, well, is, uh, this is the end of this round before you answer that. That's the left on the right and got yeah. away with it. A cracking punch that. Ben's left still working well, but he's a little bit more careless in that round we've just seen. Corners, ten seconds. Would you have considered that a knockdown, Jim? Yeah, I think so, Reg. It was Ben's fault that he got caught in the top of the head because it was bending down low. Right, round seven. Well, they are. It's got it a bit closer than I have, actually, there. But then again, deducting the point may matter there. Barry McGuigan's very unofficial, of course. Scott Ben uh, one round ahead, or one point ahead. I wouldn't have scored the 10-8 round, uh, Reg. I think I'll just uh, give that to Watton the 10-9. I don't think he was clearly winning the round uh, before the knockdown, so I've got it slightly more in Ben's favour. But the main thing is Watton, for his own point of view, has gotten so back into the fight. He's letting punches go and full bloody shots at that. Touch his shoulders and forearms in those clinches. Still good jabs from Ben. Yeah. Not controlling the fight the way it was earlier, Reg, but still jabbing well, but Wharton right back into it now. He does hang on tight with the right arm there, doesn't he, Wharton? I don't blame him. He's protecting his ribs as well and trying to stop Ben from punching inside, but the referee's got to break them. He tried the uppercut there, Jim Walton. Well, he certainly reverted to his amateur style of doing a bit of boxing as well as the, the punch power there, Nigel Ben. It goes the gum shield. Yeah, the referee will have to pick that up and stop the bout at the appropriate moment to replace that. Now, now's a good time. Yeah, they, he'll do that now. It's a medical rule. He's just kicked it back to the corner as well there, Wharton. So they have to wash it and put it back, but they do take the time off. There we go. It's well covered there from the cameraman. They've got everything that happened. You were right in there with him. Well, I said earlier, Wharton would have to start backing Ben up if he wants into the fight. He started trying to do that now. Now he's got a chance to get some power into his own shots. Ben just lost a little bit of his composure, looking a little bit ragged at times. Yeah, his own defence, a little bit open, Reg. Yeah, a little bit of the impetus. <laughs> referee had a job getting out of the way there as Walton backed off. He's still a nippy referee, though, uh, Tony Price. <laughs> it's 
was talking to them the whole time there, Perez. He's trying not to interfere there. That's good referees like to do that. Control it from uh, away from the boxes by word and not by strength. Well, they're settled down a bit now, uh, Jim, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's more even action now because they're Terry warming his webbed up. Yeah, Terry O'Neill is in the corner, seen a lot. Well, have, let's have a look at that gun shield flying out there, Jim. I just uh, also point out that if a boxer spits it out deliberately, probably more than once, then a referee can take points away. Well, that was certainly well, that knocked was, out. That was knocked out, yeah, certainly. I didn't suggest it was anything else, but just to fill you in with the rules, he can take a point away if they continually spit the gun. Out. A little dab of a nosebleed there early on, Ben, but it didn't seem to matter. Get that in the schoolyard, he'd probably say. Coming out early for work in the eighth round. Here's Gary Newbomb with Mickey Duff in the corner. Mickey, Mickey Henry's really getting back into this. Yeah. It's a case. He's a better fighter if he believes in himself. It's a big occasion, and the, the only doubt, the only way he will lose the fight is if, is if the atmosphere, if the occasion gets the best of him, because he's got the ability to win. He should be taking a shot. Nick Henry. Got caught by the ball. So there you are, Mika Dasa only has the ability to win. But uh, I know that that Nigel Ben would disagree with that. Well, the most significant thing, that oh. was a gun shield again, that was a good right hand lead. Chopping punch as well, look at it. He travelled a long way, but he got the message, didn't he? See, the second time up now with the shield, and he's asking the cameraman to throw it back. They put it in their laps there. And he, won't, he doesn't want to waste his opportunities. There's some boo in there that he stopped it, but the referee's perfectly in order to do so. It certainly wasn't Wharton's fault there, he got it knocked out. But uh, obviously it takes the, the play away a little bit from Ben there, as he was just on top, obviously. Ben's hands are going round behind Wharton when they're up close now. He's not getting the punches off the same way as he was earlier. That's more like it from Ben. He's generally got control, though, Ben, hasn't he? Yeah, he's boxing well, very well controlled. He's just a little bit looser now than he was uh, in the first four rounds. Watton was doing exactly what Ben wanted him to do, backing off with a tight defence, not throwing too many. But now Watton's trying to back him up, and it's much tougher for Ben. See, Ben, just a little bit ragged at times now. Watton's still very controlled. I think Ben's accepted the fact now that Wharton does absorb a good punch, because that was a cracker. He's knocked over a lot of people with that type of punch in the past, Jim. It was a lovely right hand reading that caught Wharton bang in the chin, but as you see, it didn't shake him. He's advertising himself there, actually, on, on the short saying, no fear he has there on the waistband, Ben. Something about the Ministry of Sound is the other emblem. Ben hasn't been using the jab in the last couple of rounds either. Remember, this fight's been shown well halfway around the world. It's been shown on the uh, pay, pay television Showtime in America. And uh, the Don King and Frank Warren bid was a £1,575,000 here, split, of which uh, Ben gets a 75%. And if you're thinking, well, I wouldn't mind fighting for that kind of money, I don't think you'd want to put the work in that these fellas do and take the punches. Let's have a replay of that, uh, that right-hand punch that leads in here and knocks out the shield, Jim. Just close down, look for the spot, bang, lovely punch. Wharton was all right, he was looking for the follow-up punch and slipped inside it. But lovely right-hand leads, he just... Here he comes Leave again. a moving target over with the right-hand, bang. 
Watton still looking at him, ducked here from the left. Well, actually, they're really stirring him up in the corner there, aren't they? Remember, it was uh, the team of Mancini and Dub that uh, got Michael Watson to defeat Ben at uh, Injury Park, and it's good to see Michael Watson back watching this one. Ninth round. How have you got it now, Jim? There's, there's Barry's, you see, he's got uh, a couple of points up with Ben. Yep, I've still got Ben in front. What would worry me if I was in Ben's camp is the fact that he's just a little bit more ragged than he was earlier on. He's trying some wild right hands, that, which he wasn't doing earlier. But you have to expect the longer the fight goes, then the harder and you begin to tire a little bit. But he's making some mistakes now, Ben. Really, the hours he must have been putting in the gymnasium with this, with, with coaching, uh, with his trainer there, you see this, you see what he's saying, come on, when are you going to lead to me, I want to shoot the counter punch, and they're right above you, Mike Nye here. Morton's trying to work behind the job now. Just a touch of the desperation stakes now, Walton, didn't he, Jim? So just unload, take a little bit of a chance. I think he'll have to do that. Ben's experience in the ropes there, serving him well. He's keeping his chin out of trouble. Walton has him pinned there, but not really having a chance to capitalise on it. See, he's, he, he's a little bit hesitant to move in and let the punches go. See, this is what Ben is dangerous at, when he's back to the ropes. Yeah, he, he uses him a catapult a bit at times. You're not supposed to unfairly use him, but I, I wasn't suggesting that, but he does. Ali was great at that too. Well, Watton still managing to back Ben up. There's that lovely right hand lead again. Ben a lot looser, Reds a lot more ragged. I wonder maybe if he's feeling the pace. He's putting a lot of good work in the first nine rounds here. Wonder if he's just starting to feel the pace. Well, he's certainly done some miles of road work out in Tenerife. I know that for sure. Whether he did enough boxing in the gym, I'm not sure about that. There's some suggestion that perhaps he didn't. I mean, obviously, you well know as a former world championship that. It's so important, the sparring, isn't it, preparation? Well, with Jimmy Ch Tibbs training them, Reg, I think the job will be done properly. Tibbs certainly one of the best in the game. I'd be very surprised if anything has been left to chance in Ben's preparation. But he set a good pace, and you have to remember, Watton did very little work in the first four rounds. So maybe he's feeling the stronger now. So over to Gary, he's got Peter De Freitas with him. Peter, how does the Nigel Ben camp see this at the moment? We feel that we're, uh, we've are we won every round at the moment. He's working well behind the jet. Well, he wouldn't have won the round where he was knocked down. Yeah, I mean, apart from that, did he take a point off? We didn't, yes. Oh, we didn't know that. Well, we think it was a knockdown for the replay. OK, so we've won every other round. He's working well behind the jet. He's doing what the corner's asking him to do. And we're very happy he's boxing like a world champion. And what about Warden? Well, he's strong and he's durable, and uh, we're just working behind the jab. You open him up through the middle and let things work off the jab. So you just the message is keep it going. Keep it going and just keep working behind the jab. Work it off the jab. So there you are. That's it. the word from the other camp then. Coming up for the tenth, and uh, well, you might be just a little bit too anxious there, saying he's won every round, Jim. Yeah, slight exaggeration. I mean, Wharton is the man who allowed uh, his opponent to have the big lead at the start of the fight, so he's given himself a mountain to climb. So he's the one who really has to raise the pace and keep it up. I mean, the signs that Ben's tiring of it, he's still dangerous, still has the power. Yeah, well, he's a little bit ragged, and that's usually a sign right, of tiredness. Looks like the old soldier there, Ben, from the Royal Fusiliers, wanted to do just a touch of the collateral bombing, bombing stakes there, didn't he? Winging away if he could. 
See, I almost feel that too much of the time, Wharton has just been a little bit hesitant to let his punches flow. And he's back and bent to the rope, but he's, it's as though he's, he's a bit worried about letting some punches go, in case he gets tagged for the counter. You've got to go out and win world titles. This is good stuff from Wharton here. Hayden ducking a bit too low, you're not supposed to duck below the, the waistline. The referee hasn't interfered at all. See, Ben won rounds clearly at the start of the fight, but a lot of the, the following rounds have been very tight, very difficult to score. Sid Nathan and Adrian Morgan from Britain, Rudy Otega from San Francisco. All three of them are referees as well, or both. Nathan can retire. It's a little bit messy there, Ben, isn't it? I'm surprised at that, too. He's lost a lot of his composure, Reg. He's quite often he's, he's, he's finding his head in some funny positions here. I really feel that's a sign of tiredness. Yeah, he might be hit by body fatigue. It's unlikely when he's... But he has put in a lot of work, Reg. A lot of good shots. Wharton saved himself in the early rounds and he's still looking strong. And so far he's certainly absorbed a very good punch, hasn't he, Wharton? Oh, poor break there and he tried to, with an uppercut, but uh, might have got a little bit of a finger wagging from the referee at Wharton for that. Oh, he's catching Ben a bit now. See, the fact that Wharton is now pushing Ben back, he has more room to let his punches go, so he's performing better. A lot of close rounds now, Reg, and the fact that Wharton's pushing him back might just sway them slightly in his favour. There's been a lot of firing from the hit there, uh, from Ben. And now, as you say, Jim, they're starting to get back into the fight now, Henry Wharton. As a matter of fact, uh, it looks as though Wharton was actually grinning at the corner there when he seemed to get better of a couple of exchanges with Ben. You know, I got that impression anyway. I told you he was a laid-back laid sort of a crowd, didn't he? Well, Wharton's the one who's what was improved, Reg. He's backing Ben up a lot more. Ben has lost a bit of his composure. Wharton still finds it difficult to catch him cleanly because he's still showing that little bit of hesitancy. But certainly boxing better. And yeah, manager Mickey Duff there in the corner of him, telling the crowd, waving them on, saying, come on, cheer for your man. He needs the cheers. He certainly gets them when he fights in Leeds. The 11th round, then. There's uh, Barry's unofficial again there, a couple of points up. Notice he put a 10-8 round there early on with the, the knockdown. I think the overall of the, the boxing right of forecast him fancied it going 12 rounds. I'm, I'm, I must say I'm a bit surprised. I thought it was well, either way, he could have ended inside, and obviously... Yeah, well, they both have the power, Reg, to finish. It was one of those fights where you just never knew what was quite was going to happen. But uh, I thought maybe a stoppage round about eight or ninth, maybe somebody making a mistake and pun being punished for it. <laughs> well, what is not messing about, Reg? He no, was ready to he right in on that. Yeah, he was having a look to sit on the ropes there. He was getting a bit too casual, Ben was. Forget the sportsmanship. Let's go on with the fight, I think. Ben again looking a bit tired. See, the trouble with Wharton, Reggie, he hasn't had too many real big rounds where you could say he won them clearly. I mean, even at the round where they scored the knockdown, I thought it was pretty itchy peachy and the knockdown let him win the round, but not clearly. 
See, Ben really digs deep when he has to. You've got to hand it to him. He really digs deep. He was holding on to the top rope at the same time there. Thumb shield again from Wharton. Yeah, third time. Now, now he'll stop it there and put it back. So he waits for the appropriate moment. And Jimmy Tibbs is calling out to Ben, take deep breaths. That's it, and he's doing it as well. And you're watching him doing that again. The, the wash and brush up, and back goes the gun shield. And that's now obligatory to wear that. See, whenever the going really gets tough, Ben digs deep. And just everything he's got, he pours it out. That's why you can never grudge him the success he's had. Never complains when the going gets rough, just keeps going. See, even when Watton has managed to pin Ben to the ropes, he hasn't managed to capitalise as much. He's missed every one of those punches there. Yeah, exactly. See, he's pinned him to the ropes, but Ben's experience has kept him out of trouble, and that's Watton's problem where the points are concerned. He needed more big rounds behind him. Yes, yeah, there's, there's points for defence as well, of course. Doesn't seem to be too favourable with judges nowadays. So, a round to go. And the crowd like that has been a little bang up there. I don't think they realise that some of those punches were missing by Wharton. himself a smile, it shows he knows uh, he's happy with the way things are going. Well, a good start for the round from Ben. Yeah, he's, he really looks lively in the last, doesn't he? See, this will look good from the back of the hall with Watton going forward, yeah, but he's exactly. not getting the punches home. Ben's defensive boxing really has been sound. Sharps and stamping there on the floor for Henry Henry, and certainly not Cooper, who's at the ringside doing a radio broadcast. They've been dying for something to cheer now, the Wharton supporters. And as Jim Watt rightly says, uh, they're probably a, bit, a little bit fooled at the back of the arena that these punches are landing. Well, that's the, the final fling, isn't it, for Wharton, and he needs it. Well, Ben wants to throw some back as well, Reggie. He's slipping the punch as well, but he wants to work a bit more as well. He'll give the ring to Wharton if he doesn't work with him. Not enough just to bob and weave. He's got to come back with some counter. Midway then. because he's not coming back with enough punches of his own. Slipping and sliding, but you've got to let the punches go as well. Oh, yeah, he's coming back now. He's going to give it the final look. He does love, as he says, a tear up, then. Half 
half a minute. Well, I think Watton's work rate of edge has taken the last round for him. But the person I don't think enough, I think Ben still holds his title. You have to remember the whole 12 rounds. Watton gave him a four round start, and that's a big start in a 12 rounder. They're going to need some security around here now. The rings already look like a, a carnival in a car park. It's already started. Referee clipped in the, the cards. Sid Nathan just uh, beside us here has handed his card in. Former Starbred referee now, the WBC judge, who's actually applauding the contest. Well, what a nice finish there. A couple of old pals. Right through that, they showed a lot of respect for each other, didn't they? Yep, sportsmanship all the way through. Wharton, I thought, Reg, just took too long to get started. He gave away the first four rounds. You can't do That's a third of the fight gone before he got into the fight. A lot of close rounds. He's going to go on either way, but I feel Nigel Ben has kept his title by a couple of points. There he is. That's nice there, Ben's saying well done. Well, I, I've, I've got Ben as the winner, Jim, and you have too. Yeah, what probably gave what in the last round just because he defended too much, didn't come back with enough punches, but uh, still what had just left a little bit too late. What needed some more real big rounds. Even when he was backing Ben up, he wasn't capitalising enough. He no. was missing too much. Yeah, just exactly. a little bit of lack of technique, maybe lack of experience. I've got a bit of faith in these judges, Jim. You know, they're, they're very experienced here. Uh, they're tried and tested, so we know what they can do. So I don't think they'll come up with a, well, a silly decision. Not even split. So all, all, all the money there that they've given for it. Well, there you are. Just got him up by one point. I think it might just might be a bit more than that. We'll see. That's unofficial, Barry. And it seems like the, the sponsors have got their money's worth uh, again tonight. The Daily Mirror and the girls getting in the ring there, they're ready to hoist the flags. Always tension time now for fighters. I, I think by the look of it, when, when you see Ben wanting to chat everybody and relaxing, uh, he said, I know I've won this. So here it comes. So the American MC, uh, Jimmy Lennon, here's the, here's the result. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. Well, that's I'll read the score totals. Judging ringside, Sid Nathan scores about 116-114. Rudy Ortega scores about 117-112. Adrian Morgan scores about 116-113. That's a, that's a one. All three in favor of the winner. And still, yeah, Nigel Ben, perhaps a bit, uh, a bit of a big one there by Rudy Ortega, 117, 112. But uh, good judging by the British judges there, 116, 113, 116, 114. Only a couple of rounds. In. That's that's about right, Jim, isn't it, with you? Yeah, that's fine with me. Yep, yep, definitely. Ben was always in front. They uh, wouldn't give him too much of a start. Left himself with too much of a break. Ladies and gentlemen, have a hand of recognition for an outstanding effort and a fine sportsman. Have a hand for Henry Watson. Well, the crowd generally approve of that, and uh, I think the Wharton fans, with the sound of it, have accepted it. And he's certainly a sporting character. His chance will come again, I'm sure. Well, then a standing ovation for the fighters here at Earl's Court, and they really deserved it. Uh, for what it's worth, I had Nigel Benn winning by three rounds. We're going to look to talk to both fighters, to Nigel Benn and to Henry Wharton, who made such a brave challenge for Benn's world title. And there's more world championship action as well, and that's coming up after the break.
And hello once again from Earl's Court. We've seen a terrific fight. We've seen Nigel Benn retain his WBC 12-stone title. A great challenger from Henry Wharton. And both fighters are now talking to Gary Newbon. Well, as ever, Nigel involved in a terrific fight. <laughs> oh, being honest with you, he, he is the toughest guy I fought. I'm not, I'm not just Tougher than Eubank? Oh, yeah. Punch, um, Eubank's got a hard chin, but no one don't. Uh, he punches hard, very hard. Very, very hard. He's got a good chin as well. Very good chin. But I thought to myself, I ain't going to go out there and try and burn myself out. I know he's a tough guy. So I thought, it's, it's a big, you know, it's his, it's his dream. You know, I've been there and I'm, I'm getting on, he's still young. He'll have another shot, you know? Henry, was that, a, was that a difference in the early stages? Uh, by the way, this is your daughter, Lydia, we ought to explain, who's three years of age, and your wife gave birth to a son, Henry Jr., last week. Congratulations on that. But you didn't do it tonight. Do you think it was the experience in the early rounds? Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I, I knew it was going to be a long-distance fight because Nigel's not going to go up from anything. I knew this was the toughest fight in my life. And I tried to come on towards the end like, like I did try, <laughs> but Nigel stayed with me. You know, Nigel's been the champion of the world. Let's not forget that. I tried to take it off him. He, see, he the thing about it, he tried to have a war at the end, and I knew he had the strength. I thought to myself, I'm just going to smother him. This is, this is when, like, the old head comes into it now. I've been in with Bartley, Michael Watson, Doug DeWitt, Robbie Sims, Eubanks. I've been in with them all. You know, the biggest thing is when he went with Lugia, no disrespect to him. And now he's gone in with me, and he gave me a good workout. I'll tell you what, I never knew he was this strong. You know, if we want a rematch, we, we've got to talk a lot. Actually, if you had a rematch, Henry, would you actually go flat out more from the start now? Of course, I've learned some, but like Nigel's learned. You know, we'd both adopt different tactics. I'd adopt different tactics, he'd adopt different tactics. Whatever we play, he's a world champion. World champions can, can turn the style to anything. You know, I'd try to turn it a few different ways, try to box him a little, try to mix it up a little. You know, we try everything, we're world champions as fighters. Henry, a very brave effort. Nigel, you're still the most exciting boxer in this country, uh -huh. and you are still world champion. Thank you very much. Good fight. Yeah, thank you a lot, mate. Good fight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Terrific interview, that, and a great feeling between the fighters. This old boxing game takes a few knocks from a few quarters, but when you, two, you see two fighters like that giving their all and then behaving like that at the end, uh, it really is quite average.